What's up mob crew, I'm Chris. In today's video, we may finally have an answer as to the true identity of the Zodiac Killer. I go over that and more in today's video. Welcome back to the channel everybody where we cover murder, mystery, to the paranormal. Chapter 1 Lake Herman Road The first murders widely attributed to the Zodiac Killer were the shootings of high school students Betty Jensen and David Faraday. On December 20th, 1968, on Lake Herman Road, the couple were on their first date. At about 10.15 p.m., Faraday parked his mother's rambler in a gravel turnout, which was a well-known lover's lane. Shortly after 11 p.m., their bodies were found by Stella Borgs, who lived nearby. It was believed that the killer ordered the couple out of their car. It appeared that Jensen had exited the car first, but when Faraday was halfway out, the killer shot him in the head. The killer then shot Jensen five times in the back as she was trying to flee. Her body was found 28 feet from the car. Chapter 2 Blue Rock Springs Just before midnight on July 4, 1969, Darlene Farron and Michael Magnew drove into the Blue Rock Springs Park and Vallejo. While the couple sat in Farron's car, a second car drove into the lot and parked alongside them, but almost immediately drove away. Returning about 10 minutes later, this second car parked behind them. The driver of the second car then exited the vehicle, approaching the passenger side of Farron's car, carrying a flashlight and a 9mm Luger in his hand. The killer directed the flashlight into Michael and Farron's eyes before shooting at them, firing five times. Both victims were hit, and several bullets had passed through Michael into Farron. The killer walked away from the car, but upon hearing Michael's moaning, returned and shot each victim twice before driving off. Farron died to the gunshot wounds, but Michael survived the attack despite being shot in the face, neck, and chest. Chapter 3 Letters After receiving a few letters from the killer taking credit for the first two murders on August 7, 1969, another letter was received at the San Francisco Examiner, which said, Dear Editor, this is the Zodiac speaking. This was the first time the killer had used this name for identification. The letter was a response to Chief Stilt's request for more details that would prove he had killed Faraday, Jensen, and Farron. In it, the Zodiac included details about the murders that had not yet been released to the public, as well as a message to the police that when they cracked his code, they will have me. On August 8, 1969, Donald and Betty Hardin cracked the 408 symbol cryptogram. It contained a misspelled message in which the killer seemed to reference the most dangerous game. The author said that he was collecting slaves for his afterlife. Chapter 4 Lake Berryessa On September 27, 1969, Pacific Union College students Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard were picnicking at Lake Berryessa. A white man, about 5 foot 11 inches, weighing more than 170 pounds, approached them wearing a black executioner type hood with clip-on glasses over the eye holes and a bib-like device on his chest that had a white 3x3 three three inch cross circle symbol on it. He approached them with a gun, which Hartnell believed to be a 45. The hooded man claimed to be an escaped convict from a jail. The killer had brought 
pre-cut lengths of plastic clothesline and told Shepard to tie up Hartnell before he tied her up. Hartnell initially believed this event to be a bizarre robbery, but the man drew a knife and stabbed them both repeatedly. Hartnell suffering six and Shepard ten wounds in the process. The killer then hiked 500 yards back up to Knoxville Road drew the cross circle symbol on Hartnell's car door with a black felt tip pin and wrote beneath it. At 7.40 p.m., the killer called the Napa County Sheriff's Office from a payphone to report this latest crime. Hartnell and Shepard were taken to the hospital where Shepard would die two days later, but Hartnell would make a full recovery. Chapter 5. A Bad Tip on October 11, 1969, a white male passenger entered the cab driven by Paul Stein at the intersection of Mason and Geary Streets in San Francisco. Requesting to be driven to Washington and Maple Streets in Prezzetto Heights, for reasons unknown, Stein drove one block past Maple and Cherry Street. The passenger then shot Stein once in the head with a 9mm handgun, took Stein's wallet and car keys, and tore away a section of Stein's blood-stained shirt tail. The perpetrator was observed by three teenagers across the street and they phoned the police while the crime was in progress. They observed a man wiping the cab down before walking away to one block north. Chapter 6 Letter and Cipher On October 14, 1969, the Chronicle received another letter from the Zodiac this time containing a swatch of Paul Stein's shirt tail as proof he was the killer. On November 8, 1969, the Zodiac mailed a card with another cryptogram consisting of 340 characters. This cipher, dubbed Z-340, remained unsolved for over 51 years. On December 5, 2020, it was finally solved by a group of private citizens. A part of it says, Because I now have enough slaves to work for me. There are other ciphers that are still unsolved to this day. There are also other homicides throughout this time that are believed to have been the Zodiac, but it still remains a mystery as to how many lives he actually took. Chapter 7 Suspects Arthur Lee Allen, who died in 1992, was a potential suspect based on circumstantial evidence. Allen had been interviewed by police from the early days of the Zodiac investigations. He also owned a watch that had the Zodiac symbol on it. Although a friend of Allen claims he was the Zodiac killer, Allen would later be cleared by DNA. Ross Sullivan Ross became a person of interest and resembled sketches of the Zodiac and wore military-style boots with footprints like those found at Lake Berryessa crime scene. Sullivan was hospitalized multiple times for bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. George Hodel was accused of being the Black Dahlia killer, whose victims include Elizabeth Short. His son Steve claims that his father was the Zodiac killer in a book he wrote, but there has not been any evidence to prove this. On October 6, 2021, a bombshell of a discovery was found when a group called the Case Breakers, an independent team of 40 former law enforcement investigators, military intelligent officers, and journalists claimed to have identified the Zodiac Killer as Gary Francis Post, who was an Air Force radar technician, veteran turned house painter who has been revealed as the ringleader of a group of men he trained as killing machines. Some of the things that connect Post to the Zodiac was that he owned a pair of military-style wing walker boots that leave footprint impressions like the ones that were found at the scene at Lake Berryessa. He also owned a machine that allowed him to print his own postage stamps, which could be untraceable. He also had a scar on his forehead that he got from an accident that looks like the same marks on the head of the artist sketch. There is also a claim that there is a giant cache of supplies somewhere up in the Sierra Mountains that could have evidence proven he was the Zodiac Killer. Apparently by using Gary Post's 
full name, it is the key to cracking some of the cryptograms that have gone unsolved. It's quite possible that this giant mystery could be solved, but sadly Gary Post died and took many secrets with him to the grave. But until someone discovers the cache hidden up in the high Sierra Mountains, which could contain physical evidence leaking Post to the Zodiac killings, all other evidence is just circumstantial, but he seems to be the best candidate for the being the Zodiac Killer. So what do you all think? Let me know in the comments down below. Do you think Post is the Zodiac Killer? If you enjoyed today's video, please smash that like button and share this video with a friend. Please subscribe if you're new to the channel. Tap that bell and turn on all notifications so you don't miss an upload. Please consider supporting my channel by becoming a member. Please take care of yourself and be sure to tell someone you love them and I love you all. Thank you.